because Grimsby is now a city that produces 755 faith in one city. That's one singular city. Good God. <laughs> Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we're playing Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to this fantastic game. Now, I haven't actually made a video on this game in several months, and so you might be sat there thinking, well, Spiff, that means there's no more exploits that have been added into the game. Nothing is wrong. Everything's perfectly balanced. Well, actually, I didn't play it for a few months because I thought things were slightly too broken, and I knew that the developers would try and patch it. So what would be the point of making a video? Video. And now here I am, several months later, with absolutely no balance patch to speak of, and I'm sat here wondering if the developers have just given up balancing this game. And you know what? Thank you developers, because thanks to your decision to not balance the game, I'm able to have a stupid amount of fun with some absolutely crazy strategies. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be breaking Ethiopia, one of the more recent additions to the game, with a strategy that I don't think anyone else has ever shown off because it's completely and utterly stupid and shouldn't function. And yet it does. So make sure you're sat back, relaxed, and you have a nice warm cup of tea in hand because things are about to get absolutely broken. As I'm going to be showing off how to destroy every single AI in this game, or just your friends if you actually choose to play against them, using one of the most broken, uncounterable strategies ever seen. So of course we're going to be starting a brand new single player game, we're going to be creating our own game, and when it comes to the game modes, we're going to be playing with secret societies and apocalypse mode. When it comes to who we're playing, uh, well there's some new additions to the game. We've got the Gauls and we've also got Byzantium. These two factions, completely and utterly broken, not balanced at all, and are completely unfair for that reason. And we're going to be playing as Menelik, another faction which is completely unbalanced and completely unfair to play against. You see, what I like about the developers is when they added in the completely and utterly overpowered nation that is, Simon Bolivar of Gran Colombia, they kind of just said, well screw it, we're going to only be adding in completely overpowered S-tier factions from this point on. This means when you're playing Civilization 6, you're either all playing the garbage old civilizations, like say the Zulus or the Americans, or you're playing the brand new S tier overpowered megastrat civilizations like the Gauls, the Byzantines, Ethiopia, or Gran Colombia. Anyway, we're going to be playing as Menelik. He's a special guy because as you can see, he receives science and culture equal to 15% of a city's faith generation. Now, this is quite a powerful feature because you're given a few extra buildings to let you generate faith, and there'll be players out there who know great ways of generating a nice amount of faith per city. Maybe they're able to generate about 200 faith in just one city. That's brilliant. Clap, clap, clap. Maybe they can go up to 400. That's also brilliant. Well done for them. The issue is we're not going to be going up to 400. We're going to be going a little bit further. We're going to be going above and beyond any natural faith generation, which would logically be able to be created by a human being, and we're dialing it up to insane degrees, which feasibly don't make any sense. And it's all thanks to completely broken gameplay mechanics and exploits. Oh, Oh, I love this game. So let's throw ourselves into a map and just to make it particularly spicy, we're going to be playing on the brand new Highlands map. You know, I think everything else is looking absolutely perfect. Actually, I do like a few more city states. Right, let's throw ourselves into the game. Oh, and perfect, we're in. Look at this very interesting start. We've kind of spawned in an odd position, I'm not going to lie, surrounded by marshlands. But if I can see something down there, ah, oh, it's a floodplain. Now, this is what we're looking out for to actually start out our strategy. We need some floodplains. Now, we're not going to be settling turn one. We're going to be settling a little bit later, simply because we need to get hold of these lovely floodplains. And oh my goodness, there's more of them. Perfect. Now, ideal scenario, we have about five floodplains, but more realistically, we're going to have three or four. If you have just two floodplains, then that's okay. You can still pull off this strategy, but the more the merrier, because we're going to be breaking the game. Oh, perfect stuff. We've got four floodplains here. That's what I absolutely love to see. Right, now we're going to be plonking our city down here. It is a little bit close to a volcano, but that's okay, as we've got ourselves access to free floodplains, which is a perfect start. Also, make sure to settle on a hill, and with this, we are set. Now, the thing is, as we're going to be winning this game almost entirely off of the back of our faith production, we need a city which almost screams to the devout and religious out there that this is our holy city. And so we need to name it after some kind of massive religious icon or location, somewhere where people would go on pilgrimages if they just knew how holy and devout it was. And I mean, what better place springs to mind than the lovely, holy 
city of Grimsby. Ah, oh, everyone loves Grimsby, except the people who live in Grimsby and the people who visited Grimsby. And honestly, anyone who's seen any image of Grimsby. But yes, everyone loves Grimsby. <laughs> okay, so now that we've got our city down, what we're going to want to do is immediately rush pottery. And what we're going to do is build ourselves a great bath. We're going to slap it down right about here. And once we've got our great bath up and running, then we're going to be able to do something quite cheeky by exploiting this game's very mechanics. So I'll get back to you in a moment once we've actually managed to get this great bath down. Now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's turn 37 and things are going quite well. We've lost about four pops to various volcano explosions, but that's perfectly fine. It's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to take because we've managed to get the great bath down and that's giving us faith. Now, why is the great bath so special? Well, it's a unique wonder where every time this river floods, we'll be gaining free faith, one on each of these tiles. And as we gain science from faith, you can start seeing where this is going to get a little bit broken. However, it is by no means completely overpowered at the moment and it will 100% get a lot more powerful the longer we go on. Now, all I need to do is get a few more cities down, get a religion up and running, and then things are going to be getting very exciting very soon. Oh, and also when it comes to the Secret Societies game mode we're playing, we've chosen the Sanguine Pact for one very special reason, and that's because in the medieval era we unlock vampire castles, and this is going to completely utterly break the game, but don't worry, we're not quite there yet, so we don't need to worry about it. So let's just continue on with a lovely regular game of Civilization VI. Now, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Things in our empire are getting a little bit fun. We're going to be getting our first city down any moment now. We've made contact with a few city-states, which are giving us a nice bonus, and our second city will hopefully be getting settled, I don't know, somewhere around here. We'll have to find a good spot for it. But yes, the city of Grimsby is looking quite good because we've picked up a couple of fun little bonuses. We've made it so that on any volcanic soil we own, we generate two faith. Because of that, we're up to a nice score of faith at almost at about 100. This is going to be great because once we get our holy site down, we'll be able to pick up a religion very quickly. And then once we get a religion going, we can really start maximizing our faith production per turn. And fantastic, we're able to settle our second city now on the coastline over here. It's not in necessarily the best spot, but honestly, just having a second city down is going to make a huge difference for us. Now that we've got this city down, we can immediately get a holy site up and running. I think I should probably focus on getting a builder up and running so that we can get some nice iron in our empire. Oh, now the world has moved into a class clearer and we've also built ourselves a lovely holy site. Now, we did only get the normal era, which is absolutely fine, honestly. It means things are going good because we're able to pick up Exodus of the Evangelist. This means when we get our first religion up and running, we're going to be gaining two era score every time we convert a city, which basically means we're guaranteed to get a golden era as soon as we get to the next stage. Oh, now, of course, the game has immediately fired the appease the god scenarios where it wants me to yeet units into volcanoes. I mean, that's absolutely fine game. I can see why you want me to do that. I'm more than happy to throw units into a volcano. So with that, we're actually going to have to buy ourselves a soothsayer unit. And then over the next few turns, we're going to start throwing things into a volcano. All right, now one thing we can do for fun is our soothsayer has two charges, which means we can use one of these charges before we have to only use the soothsayer to sacrifice units. And so we're going to use one of these charges to cause a disaster. This disaster, because we're standing on a river, is going to be a flood, of course. So we hit cause disaster. And of course, the flood immediately gets mitigated because we have the great bath here. However, because the flood has taken place and the game has recorded that the flood has taken place, all floodplain tiles have gained a single faith point. So this tile here now gives us five food and two faith. This one here gives us three food, one production, two gold and two faith. This is all absolutely fantastic stuff. Anyway, we need to actually position ourselves next to a volcano because it's sacrificial unit time. So here's an interesting thing that I've just noticed about this game is that whenever you sacrifice a unit into the volcano, you actually get hit by an emissions penalty because you're releasing carbon into the atmosphere by burning a unit alive. So because we burnt our scout alive, we've actually added 80 CO2 into the atmosphere just off of the back of our sacrificial burning. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. And um, once again, we're just going to sacrifice another unit into the flames and that is going to hopefully put us, oh my goodness, we won't be in the first spot. Oh no, this is an issue. We'll get second place. I mean, I suppose second place will still give us the free promotion. We won't get the free soothsayer unit. Well, I guess that will still be enough. The free soothsayer unit is only going to save us about 50 faith in the long run, which I guess isn't going to be too much. Oh, fantastic. We can actually found our first religion here. Now, there are already two other religions in the game, Zoroastrianism, which chose to get food and housing and faith and science, and Catholicism, which has chosen to generate culture and faith and just more faith. Okay, that's just, uh, that's just not very special. Instead, we're creating the ultimate religion, which is going to be an absolute cheese fest. It's going to be generating copious amounts of faith and be very, very profitable to have for an empire. But most importantly, it's got to represent Britain and almost the 
soul-crushing upsettingness that is Britain. And so for that reason, we're having the religion of Butlins. For those of you that don't know what Butlins is, it's one of those holiday resorts, but it's very English, meaning it's terrible. <laughs> now, we're going to pick up this lovely little bonus, which means all relics yield triple faith and tourism, which is great for us if we have lots of relics. And then we'll also be picking up Holy Order, which means missionaries and apostles are 30% cheaper to purchase. So that means we can spread our religion a bit faster. And there we go. Butlins is the true path of salvation. Please ignore all the other ones. I mean, Butlins is not the true path to salvation. Anyway, time for us to go on an adventure. We've got to get another city down and fast. Now, what I will do is make sure to keep one of our lovely warriors nice and close to our base, because this is going to mean we always have someone to sacrifice should the mission end up rolling around, because as soon as there's an opportunity to sacrifice our citizens, we're going to be jumping on it. And I realise now that we actually have a whole bunch of faith lying around, we might as well build ourselves a shrine and also purchase a few missionaries to get this lovely thing spreading. But before that, I think we could use another settler, because really, it's Civ 6, and that means it's the civilization where the more settlers you have running around the map, the better. I've upgraded a clubman into a swordsman, and that's given us the era score. Fantastic, we're going to the Golden Age, and this is the most perfectly balanced Golden Age as well, because the medieval era Golden Age means you're able to pick the most stupid bonus that this game has ever added, and that bonus is the ability to buy civilian units using faith, and that they're 30% cheaper. This is so mind-bogglingly stupidly dumb, I have no idea why it was approved to be in the game, because I'm going to scrap building this settler. I don't need this settler anymore, because I can just buy a settler. I'm making 41 faith per turn. How much is it to buy a settler? Only 195 faith to buy a settler. Oh, well, I guess even I could do that. So I'm going to move my lovely Zankrian off of the center of Grimsby, buy myself a settler, and heck, next turn I could buy myself a builder, or rather I could just build one in Skegland, where it's going to immediately spawn with an additional charge. Oh, this is just perfect. Things are really coming up our way now. Right now, welcome back. Things are about to start getting very spicy because we've finally hit the point where we're in the medieval era and we can actually buy the next bonus of the Sanguine Pact. This is the fantastic ritual bonus, which gives us a brand new vampire, but most importantly, we get to now build two vampire castles. These can be built anyway, but they're very unique little buildings. Why are they unique? Well, they give a special bonus. What kind of unique bonus? Well, they can build a castle. This castle provides plus one food and increased defensive strength for any occupying unit, but also something else which is um, a little bit slightly completely and utterly overpowered. You know, just a minor imbalance in gameplay feature like taking all of the yields from all of the neighboring tiles and just stacking them onto one. Yeah, something not so necessarily broken like that. Just might be broken, you know, maybe just a little bit, incy wincy bit, maybe, question mark. So what we're going to do is build our first vampire castle and just slap it down here, but this is going to be a unique vampire castle because, as you can see, it takes the yields of all neighboring tiles, meaning this vampire castle is producing 20 food, 9 production, 5 gold, and 8 faith. Would you look at that? That's definitely a tile you want to start harvesting. That is lovely. Now, after building that first vampire castle, you can probably immediately see that our faith production is pretty high. We're up to 87.9, which is a lovely spot to be in. However, it's going to start getting a little bit more crazy in here in terms of our yields, because we can build ourselves yet another vampire castle right on over here, and once again, we're bam. This one's a little bit simpler. It's just 19 food, 6 production, 2 gold, and 4 faith, but we can actually improve these yields by a lot, and it's not actually going to take us much either. In our capital of Grimsby, things are going great. We're able to now build ourselves apostles, which are lovely units to have. In fact, we'll get our first one. We should probably also build the Kotaku Inn. It's not the best wonder, but it is going to boost the amount of faith we produce in this city by 20%, which in the long run is going to be big. So let's get it slapped down. Now that we've actually improved our religion, we can pick up yet another bonus, and of course there's some great things to have in here, like increased gold for each city following this religion is always lovely. Giving you missionaries and apostles an additional spread can be great, but we're going to pick up tithe because we could really use the additional gold income, and it gives us a nice incentive to spread our religion as much as possible if we get gold every time we do it. And there we go, we got the Appease the Gods bonus, which means we get a free Soothsayer unit, an additional 4 faith per turn, but most importantly, all of our original Soothsayer units gain a bonus. Now, is it a good one? Yes, it is. Plus one charge and adjacent enemy cities are automatically besieged. This is brilliant, because as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of lovely tiles here, ladies and gentlemen, and guess what we're about to do to them? We're going to turn them from being tiles that produce four faith into tiles that produce more than four faith. So we're going to cause a disaster. It's going to be mitigated. Then we're going to cause another disaster. But don't worry, it's mitigated. And then we're going to cause yet another disaster. Don't worry, it's all mitigated. But now these tiles are producing seven faith per turn. And Grimsby's faith production is up to 95. This is lovely, as things are about 
to start getting extra spicy. Right, it's now the next turn and once again we're going to cause yet another disaster which will be mitigated, another disaster which will be mitigated, and finally another disaster which will be mitigated. Fantastic stuff. Now these tiles are producing 10 faith per turn. And this is great because what we can actually do is move our lovely vampire unit over here, tear down the castle that's there and build another one. Now we are going to go into a dark age but honestly it doesn't actually matter at this point because we've basically won the game. But seeing as we have 9 turns left I might as well with the 1500 faith I have in the bank buy myself a settler in that city and another settler in this city. There we go. And I can just march them out into the middle of nowhere and get a couple more cities settled. Now once again we'll just use these soothsayers a few more times because we're unlikely to get another soothsayer event for a while and we're bam with that these tiles are now producing 12 faith per turn. We're going to move our vampire onto here and next turn he's going to be able to basically shred up his own castle. Now actually I've made a mistake I realise in order to actually take a vampire castle down you need to have yourself a builder in order to do it so we're going to have to buy ourselves a builder with the oh my goodness costly 145 faith oh that's so much money and then we can get ourselves a new updated vampire castle. Right luckily we've managed to get another city converted to Butlins and this city doesn't even have a name which means it needs yet another garbage sounding English name which means it's named Fleffing Bridge upon Tyne because that's just the classic quintessentially English sounding -y kind of name I could come up with. Anyway naturally we send our builder down to the lovely vampire castle where he's going to tear that building down and look at that oh that's going to really nerf our production of resources but it's okay because next turn our vampire can just build a new one. Alright and now we're going to build ourselves a brand new upgraded vampire castle which will once again take the yields of all neighbouring tiles. That means this tile here now produces 24 faith per turn as well as 22 food. Meaning in our city we're making 117 faith per turn which will increase as soon as we actually fix up a few more of these tiles. And with that, that means we're making 17.6 science from faith and 17.6 science from culture. This is great but it can be improved especially if we get our builders over here to start improving these little tiles here. So there we go, that's up to 9 faith now. So things are looking even greater. That's 18.8 science just from faith and we haven't even really gotten online yet. Because of course we're going to dial this up to 11 because we can. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Things are going quite well for our empire. It's turn 143 at 640 AD and we're about to found the first Butlins in Singapore. That's right, Singapore now has its very own Butlins. <laughs> Oh god, I feel sorry for the local population. But it just had to happen. When it comes to Grimsby, we're going to be finishing off the Kotuku Inn. This is going to increase the amount of faith generated in the city by 20%. An absolutely lovely thing to have. And things are generally looking actually really quite good for our empire. We're sending our lovely adventurers and builders out into the wider world. Mostly because we have a stupid amount of faith. So they're really nice and cheap to actually buy. I think we're ready to found our next few cities. Well, bam, here's going to be our next city. And finally, we're going to get yet another city settled right down up here at the top so well, bam, two brand new cities and of course when you settle two new cities normally you have to spend I don't know you'd spend the first 30 turns building a builder no instead we can just buy one because you know they're so ridiculously cheap and have them do all the work for us it's perfect oh and things are about to get very exciting for us because we've just unlocked theocracy meaning all purchases with faith are now 15% cheaper now we have one turn before the end of this era so naturally what you want to do is swing around your city and buy a build with any additional faith that you have left lying around and naturally we have a decent amount of faith lying just around and even if we don't necessarily use these builders immediately we can still just keep them sat about for a later date and it's going to save us a massive amount of time down the line. Now things in our empire are going very well because we've basically hit the snowball point where we went from making 200 faith per turn to now making 300 faith per turn only 10 turns later. This is because everything's going great in the empire. Now what we're able to do once again is get our soothsayers to cause two brand new disasters. There we go. Even more soothsayers. Lovely stuff. So that's six more faith now added to these tiles. Although you have to remember six more faith isn't actually six more faith. Because whilst these two tiles now make 19 faith, what we can actually have happen is something pretty exciting. Yes, now what we can do is use our soothsayer yet again to add faith to all of these tiles. So they're now all up to 20 faith each. And what we can do is have our builder tear down this building. This building gives us 24 faith, 5 gold, 9 production and 22 food. This is going to change because we're 
we're going to remove the improvement so the vampire castle is gone and now have our lovely vampire here build the castle again, resetting all of the stats so that they now actually match and double all of the bordering tiles, meaning this tile now gives 40 faith per turn. So combined, these tiles all here make 80 faith. If we add this tile here as well, that's 100 faith just within these four tiles here. But things can actually get a lot worse because this 100 faith that we're producing here isn't 100 faith, it's 120 faith. Thanks to the Kotaku Inn, we're generating even more faith off the back of it. So the city of Grimsby, which you might remember only a few turns ago was making 100 and something faith is now making 245, meaning the amount of sides we're gaining from faith is 36.8. Things are looking quite spicy. But we're not even in our final form, ladies and gentlemen, because we still need to tear this vampire castle down and get even more soothsayers in the mix, because thankfully they're pretty cheap now. They're 680 each, but each of them can add free faith three times to these tiles, which is nine faith in total, which then gets increased by the vampire castles, etc, etc. You see, it's completely and utterly broken. And I just love love it. Now in terms of science production we have overtaken the entire world but we're still not actually at a point where I'm comfortable in saying we have this entire game in the bag. No, I want to see more. So naturally the soothsayer needs to cause even more natural disasters on this river. But we are definitely hitting our spiral. The spiral point where at which the AI will never ever be able to catch up to us. And fantastic, we've made our way over to Uruk, the capital city of Sumeria, where naturally we're going to just start causing a little bit of chaos and inspiring the local government to actually build themselves a butlins <laughs> because that's exactly what this society needs every society needs a butlins whether they like it or not oh good god well bam there we go Uruk gets hit with another 200 followers of butlins but in comes the next missionary to finish off the conversion job right now once again we're going to tear up the local vampire castle here that one was only making actually four faith per turn but by building a brand new one well bam suddenly it's making a nice and healthy 20 faith I do believe nope 25 faith per turn sorry I was completely wrong there now that is a lovely yield to have. Well, as well as the nice 21 food, 9 production and 2 gold. And next turn, the conversion of Uruk will be complete and they will have their very own butlins. That's right. The butlins will have been spread. Spread those butlins. <laughs> oh god. Don't ever tell someone to spread their butlins. Um, you're just going to get slapped in the face. Anyway, our apostle is going to travel even further south into those lands to cause some lovely additional chaos. The city of Uruk has now been converted. Lovely news. And our other apostle will actually head down south into Nubia because why not we might as well fully convert them to our religion as well and of course we're going to get ourselves a golden era because we're just gaining so many ridiculous era points our faith is so high and a random flood happened on its own meaning those tiles gained some production and food but most importantly they also gained a faith point each we didn't even have to spend any faith on that oh that's perfect oh, and fantastic we finally met the Congo Empire they appear to be well I was going to say they were going to be one of our only adversaries in the game but I'm telling a lie apparently the only empire I need to worry about is Pedro of Brazil here. However, he's not really actually in the lead because we have greater science and culture per turn than he does. Equally, we have more gold per turn than he does by a long shot. We have over 10 times whatever faith he makes in a turn. So, yep, things are kind of going our way a bit. And fantastic, we've built the Kilwa Cassini. This is a very unique city-state building because it increases bonuses from whatever city-state you effectively are a suzerain of. It's a very stupidly powerful one to have under your control. And now it's ours. Because immediately, thanks to it, our faith production and science production have increased. I do love the Kilwa Cassini. Honestly, one of the best wonders you can ever build. And thanks to our lovely cheekiness and just generally being ahead in the game, we're able to be suzerain of five different city-states. And if we can, we're going to try and pick up Geneva because Geneva is just insane. Plus 15% science whenever you're not at war with people means that we're gaining more science off of the back of our lovely faith, which is a very powerful little feature to have. Right now our Souf says and naturally just going to stand around just outside our capital, do a little bit of hyping up, and there we go, we've added some more faith onto these tiles then up to 35 faith per turn which is a nice spot to be of course we can improve it even more right and now what we naturally do tear down our vampire castle that wasn't giving us enough faith and just get our local vampire to build it again and we're bam would you look at that we're up to 548 faith because this one tile is making 72 faith but remember it's not really making 72 faith because it's making more than that as it gains a modifier of 20 percent oh, you just love to see it it's completely fair and balanced i actually able to still Geneva this turn. Yes, I am. So we're going to go from having 175 science to having 213 science because our cities are now receiving plus 45% science from modifiers and 64.8 science from faith. We haven't even got our campus repaired yet, but because this sole city is making 432 faith per turn, well, our science and culture scores are just incredible. 
absolutely fantastic. <gasps> fantastic, it's another Appease the Gods event. Oh, this is it. This is the fun one because it's time for us to sacrifice some units into the fire again. We've got loads of men on standby, so let's walk our lovely swordsman right up the road, although I suppose you could probably use an upgrade into a musketman. There we go, we're bam. That's 55 melee strength, more than any other AI has at the moment. Meanwhile, what we're also able to do, because our faith score is just so incredibly high, is buy ourselves units, which are ridiculously cheap. Take this pikeman here. It's 41 melee strength for only 305 faith. So why not? Let's buy one of those. We can throw them into the flames and fire to appease the gods and gain a bonus. All right, now the turn of great fun sacrifice can truly begin because we're about to have some fun. The crossbow people can jump in front of the fire and that's an immediate wabam sacrifice. The lovely monk can jump in front of the fire and oh no, we're going to need another soothsayer to sacrifice them. Yes, we are. Let's also walk in that fantastic musketman. Now, the reason why we've kept all of our soothsayers lying around is because when we win this event, and trust me, we are going to win this event, all of our soothsayers will gain a brand new trait and that new trait will in the very least grant them one new charge, meaning all of the soothsayers we have lying around with only one charge remaining will suddenly have two charges remaining at least. Heck, they might even have three. And if this is the case, we can have them generate even more faith than they were ever meant to. Oh, and yay, we've entered the modern era in 1330 AD. My god, we have so much faith lying around. I need to buy more soothsayers. I really do. Okay, very well. Let's get ourselves set up for this. I'm going to buy a builder and another soothsayer. I mean, sure, it's like 1,400 faith to buy a soothsayer, but that really isn't actually that much for us anymore. And of course, we're going to send this builder straight over to the vampire castle, which we're going to have to flesh out. And let's cause yet another flood. Perfect. And there we go. We've won the lovely competition, meaning we've gained a soothsayer. And whatever bonus did we get? We picked up messenger, meaning our soothsayers all gain a charge and two movement. Fantastic. So now is the turn of the great soothsayer chaos. We're going to move this pikeman right the way back down because uh, some fun things are about to happen. And now we're going to expend all of these soothsayers. So cause one disaster. Perfect. Cause another disaster. Absolutely perfect again. This soothsayer, I also need you to cause a disaster. And this soothsayer here, another one as well. And the free soothsayer we have standing around needs to actually stand on by. Same with all of these other soothsayers that we've just had standing here waiting to be used because I mean we're going to start burning through all of them now. I mean why not? They're so cheap and so very powerful. Right the chaos is really going to start beginning so each of these tiles give us 45 faith but that's not what's going to end up happening. I'll uh, let you know what the final figure is once I've burnt through all of these soothsayers because I have a metric ton of them to melt through. <laughs> oh my god this is going to be a bit insane. Right I've burnt through all of our soothsayers that we had lying around and now these tiles are up to 69 faith each. That's right, for each of these tiles, 69 faith. Meaning, this vampire castle which gives us 72 faith, nope, it's no longer going to give us 72 faith. We're going to tear that down, nope, we don't want it like that, and build it again. Now it gives us 138 faith on one tile. That's more than most entire cities in this game, because Grimsby is now a city that produces 755 faith in one city. That's one singular city. Good God. <laughs> We are gaining 113 sides from faith alone, which is as much as any other civilization. Even more so when we add on our other modifiers, plus 5% from amenities and plus 45% from other various modifiers, meaning our science from faith is actually over 150 per turn. This is absolutely incredible stuff, of course. Oh, I absolutely love what we've done here. Ladies and gentlemen, I never thought I would ever have to say this, but Grimsby has become a religious icon. I mean, the city itself is producing faith at an extraordinary rate where no other empire will ever be able to actually keep up with our insanely good faith production, which is going to be able to keep causing disasters to make Grimsby even more powerful, because it turns out Grimsby becomes more powerful with each passing disaster it has. And trust me, Grimsby has a lot of disasters. Our great news, our expression of cultural heritage will now define humanity's future in the Atomic Era. That's right, it's 1430 AD, but we're already in the atomic era because things have gone very wrong. <laughs> oh no, Grimsby is the most advanced society in the entire world. What I love is that we can actually directly see how much each soothsayer is adding to our science output. So in the top left, we can see we make 374 science per turn, 281.1 of that is from Grimsby, but of course making 374 science per turn is great, but we can cause a natural disaster here. Suddenly we're making 375. Move this soothsayer down here, cause another disaster. We're bam, 376. 
6.1. And don't even get me started on what happens if we upgrade the vampire castles as well. Right, anyway, let's buy ourselves yet another Sue said. They're now 2,000 faith, but I mean, we make 1,100 faith per turn, so it's hardly the worst thing I've ever encountered. I mean, all of our scores are just completely and utterly off the screen. And here it is, we've achieved a score of over 400 science per turn. This is an insanely good figure that doesn't really make sense considering our entire society's faith production is off of the back of a singular, very regularly flooding river. But said river is now also giving us tiles that give us 93 faith, so I mean it is quite powerful. Anyway, let's once again tear up this lovely improvement, rebuild a vampire castle, and give ourselves some extra faith on this one tile. Now, I personally don't think I've ever seen a single city produce over 1,000 faith per turn, but here it is, Grimsby. Well over 1,000 faith per turn just from one city. Does it make sense? No. Is it fantastic? Yes, it is. I absolutely love it. We can even pick up indoctrination, which means we get an additional vampire and our vampires can build an additional castle. That's right, we can get a brand new vampire castle down anywhere we choose. Where on earth are we going to put it? Well, I mean, there's so many tiles that give us stupid amounts of faith. We might as well just slap another one down right here, I guess. Wait, what the heck? Oh, lovely. A comet strike has landed. Um, well, sadly, we've lost an entire city. I'm pretty sure that was Mega Slough. Yep, Mega Slough is dead. And actually, our faith production has just gone up. Yeah, it turns out we didn't really need Mega Slough. Pretty redundant in the aspects of faith generation. So as long as we still have Grimsby, everything's fine. Let's cause a few more natural disasters there. Sure, the apocalypse is happening at the moment, but the citizens of Grimsby are happy sleeping at night knowing that immortal vampires who are hyping up faith via natural floods and the end of the world are generally doing it with their best interests in mind. Honestly, I'm amazed the AI isn't really upset with me for the sole reason that I've brought about the end of the world as we know it. They just don't really seem to mind. Anyway, we're going to fire off these soothsayers and then build ourselves another vampire castle. So there we go. We've added nine faith this turn, which is perfect. These tiles are now up to 109 faith each. So let's build our vampire castle, which now produces a eye-wateringly lovely 218 faith per turn, meaning Grimsby as a city is producing 359 science per turn, 1,238 science per turn, and 321 culture per turn. These statistics are greater than any other civilization. Heck, you can take the top three civilizations here, smash them all together, and they still don't even have our science and culture output. It is insane how well we're able to do off of the back of one single city, the Great Bath, and a whole bunch of soothsayers, because you can just spam them out, and they're going to give you limitless science, limitless faith, and limitless power, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. Anyway, um, this has been this week's look into why Civ 6 is a completely unbalanced game, and I absolutely love it. If you want to see more Civilization 6 videos, then I'll make another one. If this video hits, say, 10,000 likes, I'll make one more Civilization 6 video, which is even more broken and will demonstrate to you how to win every single game against friends in a completely unfair, uncountable way. Oh, and it'll even have a fun, weird, wacky exploit, which doesn't really have much of a practical application thrown in there for good measure. Anyway, as always, if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Why not consider liking the video and heck, hop on down to the comment section and tell me about how you fully embrace your brand new religion of Butlins. Ah, it's truly a magical experience to go to Butlins. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much. Without you lovely ladies and gentlemen, we wouldn't be able to make really fun videos like this. So give yourselves a pat on the back. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be exactly what you're looking for today. So why not refill your cup of tea and get comfy because your spiffing Brit tea drinking experience for today is just getting started. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.